There we go. The Olympic has fractured down the center and is going v break. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and in today's video, we are back in Floating Sandbox, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Estonia made by Tim Can. So yeah guys, let's get into the video. Now, as you can see, we're in a pretty bad storm here. Well, we're not really in a storm. We can actually go ahead and spawn one in by going to the tool menu and triggering a storm. Now, what we're going to do is we are actually going to break the Valbizer, but allow it to be held on by one or two points on the ship. So, um, let's go ahead and cut it open there, and there we go. So, it's actually being held on by one vertice there, and it is swinging a little bit. But now, we have water rapidly filling the car deck. It's spilling in, and actually what it's going to do is it's not going to entirely flood the car deck. Because once it gets to one of these staircases here, it's going to pour down into that staircase and flood those lower decks. So, it can't really continue too far aft before filling up the entire lower deck space. So, as you can see, a lot of water is now entering the car deck and spilling down into these lower compartments. You can already see once the water goes in, it spills right down to the lower decks. And I think this is a crew or passenger space here. I knew there were cabins below the car deck, so I'm pretty sure that's what this space is. But as you can see, that is a lot of water. That's a huge amount of water pouring into the vessel. So right now, we've not only got the car deck flooding, but this passenger space along with these three compartments here as well as this one, if you want to count that as a lower deck compartment. Looks more like just a, a lower level of the passenger space, but not really a crew compartment. So yeah, it is flooding all of these spaces, and it's making its way aft as well. So yeah, the ship is uh, rapidly taking on water, as you can see. Now, of course, in real life, the ship rolled over, but here we only get a 2D view, which means the ship is actually just going to be going down by the bow, it seems, or it could go down level depending on what happens, but uh, wow, uh, some lightning just hit the funnel there, so yeah, and um, yeah, it's going to be a little interesting to see what happens. Oh my gosh, okay, the funnel is really getting damaged by lightning there, so yeah, but as you can see, so much water is getting into the ship now that it is now actually flooding over the staircases and making its way into the next compartment aft. And now it's actually, what it's doing is it's spilling down into the double hull here, or the double bottom. And, um, yeah, that's rapidly flooding as well. And the bridge is gone at this stage. Some waves are crashing into the bridge. And it's really just a mess at this stage. All right, so the water is now beginning to make its way into the engine compartment space. As you can see, once it actually gets past here, I think this is where the engine room is located. I haven't looked at the deck plan, so I'm pretty much guessing at this stage. But, yeah, the water is now pouring aft into these larger compartments, and it's taking the ship down. So, yeah, and it looks like the bow visor finally gave way and fell off, as you can see there. All right, the ship isn't really tilting out of the water anymore. It's kind of settling a bit but as you can see the storm has just passed and we're gonna go ahead and let the ship sink without a storm now because i think we have enough lightning damage and flooding from rain and yes you heard me correct there is flooding from the rain as you can see up here the water is getting onto these upper decks from the rain pouring through the funnel and whatnot so yeah that's really interesting but as you can see the bridge is gone and um yeah there's a lot of water in the ship she's around that stage where she would probably have just plunged or gone under because there's not much buoyancy left in the forward part of the ship now that's pretty cool. Look at that. That's definitely water pressure right there. I know that they added water pressure to the game recently, but as you can see with each wave, it's forcing the water up into these upper decks. And you can see it's actually going through one of the ventilation shafts, I believe, from the engine compartment. So yeah, very, very cool. I really like that feature that was added there. Kind of makes it a little more realistic, but this is it. The Estonia is going under. You can already see it is beginning to make that plunging motion where the bow is just continuously dropping and pulling the the stern right out of the water so yeah here it goes most of the battleship is gone and now really the only thing that remains that is buoyant is the stern of course now she is plunging a little slower than some ships and the reason that that is is you still have a large air pocket down in this section here and that is what's holding the bow up that's the only thing holding the bow up if that goes and it will inevitably it will just completely go vertical now what's interesting is you'll notice there's actually uh fractures here don't know if this is from the ship flexing or not i wasn't really paying attention to that 
but um, obviously it could be caused by pressure. I don't know. But uh, the water has rapidly taken over the vessel, and she is going vertical now. Look at that. Now the funnel is getting enveloped with water, and that means that there's just going to be tons and tons of water pouring down into the ship, and uh, actually right down through the entire ship, because those uh, ventilation pipes lead all the way down to the lower deck, so we can see the ship going quite rapidly at this point. Now, actually, I think it is. You can see, look at how much water is filling up the funnel and making its way down into the interior of the ship, and you can already see that this whole deck is gone now. All right, she is going under now. She's somewhat capsized. She's leaning past 90 degrees, but um, this is it. As the lower decks fill up, this gap here is now beginning to fill. It's going to be that counterweight, which pulls it back to 90 and then pulls it down. So, yeah, that has been Estonia. A uh, pretty cool ship. Um, and, uh, yeah, it is available in the base game, so you can download it there. So, yeah. Now, what's really cool is look at all those bubbles escaping the ship here. That is really really neat and um it really does add some detail to the game especially from that open bow visor there because i'm pretty sure that it's connected to a space that has air in it so obviously uh it's showing those bubbles but um yeah really cool all right i've opened up a few spaces in the stern to replicate broken windows but as you can see there she goes and she's going quick now with those open spaces now actively flooding it's just literally a matter of seconds now before the stern finally goes under and with the next wave it is about to go under and there it goes so yeah that has been the estonia so let's go ahead and move on to the next ship all right so here we have the second ship we're taking a look at this is the polar sea this is an icebreaker and this ship has some controls in game so let's go ahead and move the telegraphs to full here and um here we go we're actually moving so my question is how well will this ship handle some fire so we'll take an icebreaker and put it in a pretty hot condition so yeah let's go ahead and set this thing on fire all right so here we go can any of this burn here uh, it doesn't look like it yeah i think this thing is fire resistant so that is good oh what the heck happened here Oh, we got some flooding going, and I actually didn't do that, so it looks like some stresses might have built up in the stern of the ship, and it is now taking on water. Now, I think we're gonna sink. The water's now flooding up into the stern compartment, so there's only one thing we can do now, and that is to try to beach the ship. So, as you can see, we've got some land here, but unfortunately, this land is quite steep, but it's gonna have to do. So, um, yeah, we're going full speed ahead, and we're going to ram the ship into the rocks. This is going to be pretty cool. I've never done this before, and it's going to be interesting to see how this plays out. But as you can see, water is now actively filling the stern compartments there, and the power is beginning to flicker out in the stern parts of the ship. Luckily, it is being contained, but once it gets up to the deck level, it's over because the water is going to spill from there into the rest of the ship. So let's hope we can get to the rocks before the ship actually gets to that point. So yeah. Oh boy, the water is now three levels high at this point if you count the uh, the empty space right where the propellers are. All right, here we go. Will the ship be able to lodge itself on the rocks long enough for the passengers and crew to escape? We'll find out. So here we go and boom. Wow. Oh my god. Gosh, that might have been a little more violent than I was expecting. Yeah, it looks like the uh, the propellers have stopped moving. Um, so, yeah, that's an obvious sign that something's wrong. But I think um, this might be just a little worse. As you can see, a significant part of the bow is gone. Um, this thing was designed for ice breaking, but... Um, it seems like it wasn't designed for land breaking. As you can see, it is now completely vertical and slowly sliding down the rock face and being torn into all at the same time. So, yeah. Um, it lived uh, a good life uh, for the three minutes that it was alive. And as you can see, it's going to be an interesting wreck at the bottom here. It's sliding down the, um, the side of the uh, land here and it's creating very loud banging noises as it does so. Uh, the entire ship is completely flooded at this stage, so there's no air pockets. And um, yeah, that was uh, that was the beginning and the end of the Polar Sea. All right, so when the ship actually comes to a rest, we'll actually do a bit of an accelerated time 
uh, to see what would happen if the ship actually just stayed here and it wasn't basically uh, exhumed from the ocean floor. So yeah, that'll be a bit interesting, but let's wait for all these noises to stop. It is so loud. All right, the ship is still sliding here, but eventually it's gonna come to a stop. Actually, we can make it come to a stop very easily. All right, here we go. And that should be good. That should stop it from moving, hopefully. It is now in the seabed and it is not moving. Excellent. So let's go ahead and bury it a little more here. There we go. All right, so that's our shipwreck there. And we'll make that look nice and neat. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and see what would happen over a period of time and how it will decay. So uh, my hypothesis is, is that these damaged sections right here, and I'll go ahead and switch out the tool so I don't accidentally build land. What was that? Oh gosh, oh no, quiet down, Stern, thank you. Anyways, as I was saying, my hypothesis is, is this section here is pretty damaged. I think this is going to start collapsing first, and then everything else is going to start collapsing. Of course, the stern will be the first victim, but when I talk about the actual structure of the ship, that's really not a structure anymore. That's just destruction. So this area here is probably going to be the first part that will collapse in, but we'll find out. All right, so the ship should start decaying now at a very quick rate. So um, let's take a look here. Um, I'm looking for some color uh, changes around the ship, and I think I'm starting to see some stuff here. And um, not quite sure where that noise is coming from. Oh, there it is. The funnel's going there. Look at that. The funnel's beginning to break apart there. And yeah, that's gone. And the rest of that funnel is gone. But the hull is staying secure so far, so that is good. Yeah, things are just falling apart here. And this is one of the main reasons why Titanic or Britannic cannot be raised. They're so fragile that they would just fall apart on the slightest movement. So yeah. All right, I'm starting to notice a few more damage spots on the hull. I think this might be it. This might be the moment where the hull completely disintegrates here. Um, yeah, a lot of damage marks are starting to appear at this stage. So, yeah, it's about to happen. Yeah, look at that. We're seeing some damage points over here growing. And some stuff at the bow as well. Uh-oh. Could give way at any moment. Some of the parts are collapsing here. There goes the stern. And we're getting a lot of fracturing down the hull here. And there we go. We've got a central fracture right here. This is the first one to crack through, and I think the next one might be just here because there's a nice uh, passage wave right down the center there. But um, yeah, this is what's left of the ship as it rapidly disintegrates. There goes the bow. The bow is now collapsing entirely, and it's making its way uh, aft of there towards the superstructure. And um, the stern is completely gone now. There's only a few pieces left. And it's slowly making its way towards the center. We're getting a central failure right here. There we go. Now the uh, the forward bridge portion of the ship is separated from the main middle part of the ship and aft part. So, yeah, it is rapidly disintegrating at this stage. Look at that. And there it goes. That is it. And it collapses. The bridge portion is gone. But it seems like it fractured on a shear line, which means that... It's actually uh, holding stable there, or I think in uh, this ship term it reaches an expansion joint, so yeah. And there goes the entire bridge of the ship, and now we're only looking at this center portion, which is rapidly disappearing as well. As you can see, there it goes, and the back part has just collapsed, and there goes the forward part there. So that has been the Polar Sea completely collapsing into itself. So. Yeah, that was pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and move on to the next ship. All right, and the third ship we're taking a look at and the ship we're going to be ending off the video with is the RMS Olympic. So don't think we've checked this out quite yet. So we're going to go ahead and check it out now. So as you can see here, we have the Olympic. Now, the first thing I want to check out is to see if this thing is flammable, just like the last ship, because it would be interesting to see if one of these ships caught fire. So yeah, let's go ahead and get the fire tool and see if this thing can burn. All right, so here we go. Let's go ahead and see the masts. Well, they're on fire now. Um, let's see, will the forward mast go? Yep, there goes the forward mast. Uh, anything on the superstructure doesn't look like it. Anything below the water doesn't look like it. There goes the aft mast. 
And, um, yeah, I don't think anything else is going to burn here. So, yeah, I think we've, uh, we've rid of anything that can burn on the ship. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and sink this thing. Actually, before we sink it, I just want to bring your attention to the fire that is actually spreading on the forecastle of the ship here, which, um, I didn't quite expect. It's also catching fire to the stern of the ship as well. But yeah, we're gonna go ahead and see what would happen if an explosion, a mine, a bomb inside the ship detonated in the direct center. Which side would the ship sink to? Would it sink level? Would it go V-break? So yeah, let's go ahead and place a bomb in the center of the ship and detonate it. So here we go, and boom! There is our explosion, and we've got water flooding in a central compartment, and two compartments beside it are now flooding. But as you can see, that is pretty much it. And uh, actually, at this stage, the water is now beginning to flood over the compartments and into the next compartment here, which means the domino effect is going to begin. And also, I forgot to turn off the rod accelerator, which uh, I might need to do right now. All right, with that problem solved, we can watch the ship go down without it entirely disintegrating. But it seems to be sinking level here, which is interesting. I do see a little bit of stress, a little bit of bending on the ship here, but it looks like it's going to be going down by the bow just slightly here. So, yeah, as you can see, the compartments are obviously flooding over one to the next to the next. And, um, yep, there goes the forecastle deck. And here comes the rapid plunge. As you can see, there it goes. And, yeah, the front of the ship is gone. And it is rapidly going down. Now, I'm going to go ahead and spawn the ship in one last time. I do want to see if we can actually try to get a V-break here. That would be kind of interesting to end the episode off with. So, you know, let's go ahead and respawn this. All right, we're back with the Olympic. And I've got a special formula to break the ship into V-break style. So, we're going to go ahead and place a bomb right at the keel. We'll detonate this one first. There we go. Okay, that separates the keel. Now, I'll place two more right above it to basically create that center fracture. So there we go, that should do it. And you know what, we'll put one down here because I think there's an invisible uh, connection there. So there we go, I think that should have taken care of that. And it's doing it, and it has broken V-break style. So yeah, there we go. The Olympic has fractured down the center and is going V-break. So uh, yeah, very, very interesting. And um, yeah, there goes the Olympic heading to the bottom. And yep, there it goes. The two halves are coming together, and that is going to make the video. So yeah, there it goes, and it's gone. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and a comment, and I'll see you next time, guys. Goodbye.